we need to obtain derivative of y with respect to x. If our function y is given in its implicit form as shown here, we also need to find out the value of the derivative of y with respect to x at a specific value of x, which will be at pi over 4. So let's begin. So here we are provided with our function y in its implicit form, that is sine inverse of 2x divided by 1 plus x square plus log of sine x with base cosine of x multiplied to log of cos x with base sine x raised to the power of negative 1. Right. So let's label this as number 1. So our task will be to find out derivative of y with respect to x. So what we'll do? Uh, we will consider the first term as y1 and the second term as equivalent to y2. So we'll find out the derivative. Let's find out derivative of y with respect to x. So that means we have to find out derivative of y1 with respect to x plus derivative of y2 with respect to x. So we'll label this as number 2 and this one is number 3. So let's begin with y1. So we'll consider y1 to be equals to sine inverse of 2x over 1 plus x squared. But we have y1 equals to sine inverse of 2x divided by 1 plus x squared. Now what we can do, we can take the derivative straight away. But we have, we can use a trick. The trick would be to make a transformation of 2x over 1 plus x squared using a trigon using trigonometric transformation. That means if we consider x to be equals to tangent of theta, then y1 will become sine inverse of 2 times tangent of theta divided by 1 plus tangent squared theta. Now 1 plus tangent squared theta, that's a trigonometric identity. The 1 plus tangent of theta is given by secant squared theta. So now we have 2 times tangent of theta divided by secant squared theta. So that means 2 times tangent of theta over secant squared theta, that's given by 2 times sine theta times cosine theta. Now 2 times sine theta times cosine theta, so that's an identity which is given by uh, 2 times cosine of theta times sine theta. So this is given by sine 2 theta. The expansion of sine 2 theta is 2 times cosine theta times sine theta. So that means we will have sine inverse of sine to theta. So this is the value of y1 and we know the sine inverse of sine 2 theta is simply equals to 2 theta. Now we consider x to be equals to tangent of theta. This would mean that theta must be equals to tangent inverse of x. So that means 2 times theta becomes 2 times tangent inverse of x. So we started out with y1 equals to sine inverse of 2x over 1 plus x squared. And when we use this particular substitution, x equals to tangent of theta, then we say that y1 becomes equals to 2 times tangent inverse of x. So in a way, we can say that sine inverse of 2x over 1 plus x squared, that's equivalent to 2 times tangent inverse of x. Now, taking the derivative of 2 times tangent inverse of x will be way easier than taking the derivative of the inverse sine function. So let's begin by taking the derivative. So we have obtained y1 as equals to 2 times tangent inverse of x. We'll take the derivative on both sides with respect to x. So derivative of y1 with respect to x will be equals to 2 times derivative with respect to x of the inverse tangent function. Now that's a standard formula. This value is 1 over 1 plus x squared. So this will be equals to 2 divided by 1 plus x squared. So we have obtained the value of derivative of y1 with respect to x. Now what we'll do? At the same time, we'll also try to calculate the value of this particular derivative at the specific value of x, which is given as x equals to pi over 4. Now let's substitute the value of x with pi over 4 on the right hand side. So we have 2 divided by 1 plus pi over 4 whole squared, which will be equals to... Uh, so we have 2 divided by 1 plus pi squared divided by 16. We will multiply both numerator and the denominator with 16. So we have 16 times 2, which will be 32, divided by uh, 16 plus pi squared. 
So that means we have obtained the value of derivative of y1 with respect to x. Calculated at x equals to pi over 4. So this value is equals to 32 divided by 16 plus pi square. So we'll label this as number 4. So we'll keep it aside for the time being. Now we go back to our equation number 2. So in equation number 2 and 1, uh, that means we now will work with y2. So y2 is given by this particular expression. So let's start with this one now. So our second term y2 is given by log of sine x with a base of cosine of x. This is multiplied to log of cosine x with a base of sine x. We will use a property of logarithm. So when we have log of a with a base of b, then this will be equals to log of a divided by log of b. Then if both of them are going to have some common base, let's call it c. We will use this particular property to rewrite our given uh, y2. So here we have log of sine x with a base of cosine of x. So we'll say we have log of sine x with a base uh, divided by log of cosine x. And since both of them must have the same base, so let's consider 10 to be the common base. So this will be now multiplied to, so here we have log of cosine x with a base of sine x. So we'll have log of sine x x in the denominator and both of them are going to have a common base of 10 raised to the power of negative 1. Now raised to the power of negative 1 means we'll have to consider the reciprocal. So let's I find out the reciprocal as well. So we have log of sine x divided by log of cosine x. So here I've dropped the base here. So it's assumed that this is 10. So this will be multiplied to log of sine x divided by log of cosine x. So this is now positive 1. Now we see that both of these two expressions are exactly equal. So we'll now have log of sine x divided by log of cosine x whole raised to the power of 2. So we have rewritten y2. Now we will take the derivative on both sides with respect to x. So let's begin. So we have derivative of y2 with respect to x which will be equals to derivative with respect to x of log of sine x divided by log of cosine of x whole squared. So here we can use the power rule that so this will be 2 times log of sine x divided by log of cosine of x whole raised to the power of 2 minus 1. So we have used the power rule. But we will need to use the chain rule. That means we'll need to multiply it to derivative with respect to x of log of sine x divided by log of cosine x. Right. So let's complete this second derivative as well. Now we have two times. So here we will write it in the compact form log of sine x divided by log of cosine x. So that's simply log of sine x with a base of cosine x. So this will be now multiplied to when we have to find out the derivative for this we are going to use the quotient rule so let's begin so here we have in the denominator log of cosine of x whole square in the numerator we'll start with the denominator which is log of cosine of x this will get multiplied to derivative with respect to x of log of sine x minus log of sine x this will get multiplied to derivative with respect to x of log of cosine x. This will give us 2 times log of sine x with the base of cosine of x multiplied to log of cosine of x multiplied to now we'll have to apply the derivative to log of sine x. We know that derivative with respect to u of, of uh, log of u that's equals to 1 over u. So here, let's apply this particular derivative. So law derivative of log of sine x will be 1 over sine x. But since we have a sine x term here, so this will get multiplied to derivative with respect to x of sine x, which is obtained as a consequence of applying the chain rule. Similarly, for the second term, we have log of sine x multiplied to so log of cosine of x will be 1 over cosine of x. So this will get multiplied to derivative with respect to x of cosine x x whole thing will be now divided with the denominator which is log of cosine of x whole square 
oh, we will continue we'll have two times log of sine x with a base of cosine of x in the numerator we have log of cosine of x divided by sine x multiplied to derivative of the sine function gives us the cosine function where cosine of x minus we have log of sine x whole thing divided by cosine of x and derivative of the cosine x is negative sine x so this will become positive over positive sine x whole thing divided by log of cosine of x whole square now we'll uh, we have cosine of x divided by sine x in the numerator. So that ratio is the cotangent function. And here we have sine x over cosine of x, which will be the tangent function. So that means we now have derivative of y2 with respect to x. So this will be equals to 2 times log of sine x with the base of cosine of x multiplied to log of cosine of x multiplied to. So the ratio cos over sine is cotangent of x plus log of sine x multiplied to tangent of x. The whole thing is now divided by log of cosine of x whole square. So we have obtained the derivative of y2 with respect to x. Now what we'll do, we'll calculate the value of this particular derivative at x equals to pi over 4. That means this will be 2 times log of sine pi over 4 with the base of cosine pi over 4 multiplied to log of cosine of pi over 4 times cotangent of pi over 4 plus log of sine pi over 4 tangent of pi over 4 holding divided by log of cosine pi over 4 whole square right so this will be equals to now we have two times log of so sine pi over four so that value is one over square root of two and base we have one over square root of two multiplied to log of cosine of pi over four so that value is one over square root of two times cotangent of pi over four that's simply one plus log of sine pi over four which is one over square root of two whole thing divided by log of cosine pi over 4 which is 1 over square root of 2 whole square right. so this will give us now but now we can use the property here and when you have log a with the same base with the same base of a then this value is always equals to 1 now in our case we have 1 over square root of 2 with the base of 1 over square root of 2 so this value goes to 1 so this will give us 2 now here in the numerator we have log of 1 over root 2 plus a log of 1 over square root of 2 so this will be simply added to each other to get us 2 times log of 1 over square root of 2 divided by log of 1 over square root of 2 whole square so we can cancel out log of 1 over square root of 2 from the numerator and 1 from the denominator and that gives us 4 divided by log of 1 with a base of square root of 2 now we know the log of 1 over a so that will be equals to log of 1 minus log of a so this is a property of logarithm now log of 1 that always is 0 so that means log of 1 over a is equals to negative log of a in similar fashion we can rewrite the term in the denominator as we have derivative of y2 with respect to x will be equals to so we have 4 multiplied to um, 1 divided by so this becomes negative log of square root of 2 which will be equals to negative 4 divided by so we have log of square root of 2 which is 2 raised to the power of 1 half right so this will give us negative 4 div divided by half multiplied to log of 2 we made use of the fact that whenever we have a times log of p so that's equals to log of p raised to the power of a so that means we now have negative 8 divided by log of 2 so we have obtained the value of derivative of y2 with respect to x calculated at x equals to pi over 4 with a value of negative 8 over log of 2 so let's label this as number 5 we have dy1 over dx is 32 divided by 
16 plus pi squared and dy2 with respect to x. So here we have obtained negative 8 over log of 2. So finally, we have obtained derivative of y with respect to x, which is the sum of them. 32 divided by 16 plus pi squared minus 8 divided by log of 2. So this is the value of derivative of y with respect to x. Yeah.